information. If it is something that take that long, small reports. Mr. Governor, too blessed to this meeting here. We'll just continue to educate Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for your love, your watch here. We ask now that you would take our talents and help us to do the wise decision for our church and nation. Forgive us our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir.
this the way you, you handled the previous year and years past? I believe it is. Okay. Gerald does his budget a little different than I do the program I work with. Um, and, and he may have already put that in the column to obligate it. At any rate, even if, let's say, the money is obligated, there are people that have a turn away. I met with a gentleman this morning who wanted to go to truck driver training, he had gone half of the training period. And, um, and then wanted to return, but when they came into our office, they're going to have to tell them we're out of funds. And he has a job when he gets his CDL, truck drivers, which is kind of one of the good um, labor market jobs. Councilor okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What happened to the money from like the Tiro revenue fees? Uh, I'm I don't believe we've really spent those, and I thought they would take care of the truck driving and some of that other stuff. I'll have to find the answer for you, Kara, and get back. Friend, I know I didn't ask you, but I believe it was two months ago I thought I asked for the report on actuals and how they had been spent. And I haven't received it, to my knowledge. Jody, would you assist us in that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? And I will officially ask and sponsor a uh, budget mod on this particular issue. Uh, Chile. Okay. And anybody else welcome to join me because this vote tick is pretty important. 16 weeks to 24 weeks we have a friend and a job. That's all it takes. Most, I would say most council members would want to be a sponsor on this. So, did Jody Reese's first job is find the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jody can handle it. Okay, good comment there, Speaker. Anybody else? Thank you, Brandon. Thank you very much. You uh, have some material coming around the table uh, for you. Now, it contains the, um, uh, actually a copy of the report that you've already received. So, if you have questions about last month's report, uh, be happy to discuss them at this time. Plus, I have some other material that, if time permits, I'd like to discuss with you. And, of course, some material about. Uh, the um, item on the agenda concerning uh, resolution to establish uh, an equitable policy for the company. So, Mr. Chairman, members uh, and uh, council of discretion, uh, uh, if you'd like for me to discuss an item or two that I have before the resolution, or if you want to take care of the resolution. I'm at your end of you have any questions uh, for Dr. Martin before we get into the uh, the resolution? Uh, don't have any questions, Mr. Conrad. Uh, Dr. Martin went to uh, Bartlesville a couple of weeks ago at Oklahoma Wesley, and they said they heard me speak from the deputy chief speak from the chief speak. And once they heard Dr. Morton, they said, just keep sending that guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he got a fan club going to Oklahoma Wesley. I had a great time there. That, that was a great experience. Maybe made me want to go back to, uh, to teaching. I had about 15 or 20 students, excellent students. And, uh, uh, we went past time, and they didn't even know it. Hey, Dr. Morton. Uh, just being a former employee of the Bell School, I, I seen a bell font on the AQF report for that at and I know there's an initiative uh, at the state level to maybe shut down those schools. And, uh, I don't know, is there some way that we can come in and advocate to the bell font? To that's, that's one of the items I want to, to talk about is the A through F uh, 
reporting on schools. And in your package, you have uh, the grade, the A through, fortunately, A through D. We didn't have an F school in the church today. But A through D, uh, schools are going to need a tremendous amount of assistance. Uh, because, let's face it, if you have a D score this year, you better get it up to a C next year. And regardless of uh, the appropriateness of the uh, rating scale, uh, we're going to, Oklahoma is going to use an A, B, C, D, F school. Uh, you've read the arguments in the paper about, uh, you know, hey, this, this can't be, this is not right. Uh, in most instances, it is not right. Because they're uh, measuring everyone with the same uh, yardstick, all right, so the you know, playing field's level. But let's face it, all students do not have the same level of ability. Yeah. On the, uh, of course, Bell and Belfont. Well, the, you won't find a Bell in there. You'll find a Belfont. So Bell and Belfont are together. So collectively, their score is, is big. So uh, everyone knows you as council members are going to receive more and more requests from public schools for assistance. Uh, because, you know, once you, before you got that score, remember when you were in school, before you got that test result, you kind of worried about it. After you got it, you sort of panicked. If it wasn't high. So that's what schools are doing now. Uh, met with a group of superintendents uh, last week, uh, local superintendents, and uh, they're they're crying for uh, for help, especially in the uh, the areas in the core subject areas. And so on. on this uh, uh, on this uh, it says Bell Belfont Public School and Belfont Bell is uh, that's. I assume that that's the D, this is the bell, that, that was consolidated, right? Bell actually, yeah, it'll actually be a, see, the State Department does not even list uh, bail. They just, they just list uh, the bell phone. So our communities drive from these small rural schools, and it'd be sad to the ironic factor about it is that Bell is growing faster than Bell Farm. Really? At 127 students now. Really? Wow. And so, uh, yeah. but yes, there will be, will be a desperate need for assistance. And instead of asking you for whole $500 to send Junior to D.C. because Junior won the trip, they're going to be asking you for some help in in the court. And, and the C, the C is doing is doing well, right? C is uh, is, our, is our, okay. Our first is there. Yeah, our first school got a C. Is that? Yeah, exactly. It, it's not failure. If you look at uh, most of the uh, schools in your areas, uh, got C's with some B's scattered in. Uh, a or two, and you get up in, uh, well, I believe Adair has an A high school. Uh, Adair is an excellent school. They're, they have nothing to worry about. But you have other schools in your, in your districts that do have things to worry about. Because the smaller schools with the low grades, face the possibility of, uh, quite frankly, being starting out. I have a question. Yes, sir. Speaker? Yes. Uh, Morton, I know you and I talked about the concern that the superintendents had in trying to raise the uh, grade levels for their schools and that they had visited with you extensively about some of the help that they were hoping that Cherokee Nation might provide, and I know we have limited funds, but I, I was 
under the belief that you had planned to assist them, but it might cause some diversion of, of funds from an existing program to this program to work with these schools. Is that correct? That's correct. And today I don't really want to pull up. Um, never didn't know the real, the real meaning of that term when we walk the switch. No one put a we walk the switch on you. I don't know what that means. But uh, at least I'd like to introduce something. A couple of years ago, when I was not in this area, uh, not working with uh, with Youth Council, uh, you passed a resolution to uh, utilize a portion of the motor vehicle tax money for special projects that were competitive in nature, where schools would write grants, write for grants, up to uh, $25,000. And in your packet, there is a one-pager like this. Now, on the left side, you have the competitive grants funded 2011-2012. In other words, that current that ended uh, September the 30th. Uh, now, naturally, all those on the left side are happy with you and are happy with me. Uh, those on the right side that were not funded. Um, aren't uh, as happy because when you when you set up a competitive situation um, everyone that gets funded is happy everyone that gets funded is not happy uh, the program has some built-in problems with it too in that uh, Jody had had a problem Doug had a problem with it in that we fund in one year and then we bridge the fiscal year, and we've got money going in two different years. Well, we solved that this year by saying, look, folks, we, we made the awards, those of them on the left-hand column here. Finish your projects up and get us the reports by September 30th, and we did. And so we, we did bridge the fiscal year there. Um, I don't see any way to do a creditable project in if we awarded these projects in uh, in March or April. You know, there's no way they can finish those by uh, the end of our fiscal year. They're not going to be in school in the summertime, so that creates a little bit of a problem. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that the money could be much more effective if it were spent in actual core subject areas, assisting schools in, in a, an equitable manner. In, and I'm talking about geographic ex, uh, areas here. There is one area that we are at present uh, in desperate need, and that's the area of math and science. And that's the area that is most critical among the core subject areas in the schools that are being graded A, B, C, D, and F. It's math and science. Uh, we are not um, meeting the needs in math and science. We're not even coming close because of uh, primarily because of lack of personnel. So $315,601 went out last year, so we last uh, spring, uh, for grants of a cultural nature. Now we have other programs that offer cultural enrichment programs. 
which we can we can meet. So instead of creating a whole new level of competitive program, I would think that, in other words, let's put it this way, I would be happy to come back to you at the December meeting with an outline of what I would propose to do. And I'll tell you briefly what it is. I would organize schools roughly in the same district that they are currently served by the Votech system. I would make arrangements with the Votech schools to use space on a free basis. Then and only then will we be able to draw teachers in, superintendents in, for staff development, for special focus programs, whether it be in math, science, literature, whatever, but primarily in math and science. We can get them to come to their local Votech centers, but if we held a meeting, let's say, at Sequoia School, we're, we're not going to get the uh, the Blue Jackets, the Nowadas, the Adairs, that's too far to drive, it's, it's out of their general area. And, by, and also that way we would not be uh, accused, as we sometimes are, of serving those that are nearer to us or that handier to serve. Then by utilizing the existing staff, plus um, hiring persons that from colleges and universities to come in to one, two, three day workshops on how to improve scores, how to make math more relevant, how to make science more relevant in your classrooms. Then I believe we would be able to assist the school in improving the A, B, C, D, F category. Question. Uh, just a comment. I was talking to speaking group about the two high schools. One is Ryan, one is Central. I used to saw something. One's my school, one's Janelle's, one's David. Three council people from District 3. All of them made A's. And Congratulations, Mr. Ryan, and I have a great, great job. Mm -hmm. Great nice. Thank you. Good job, Mr. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Um, if Dr. Morgan brings forth this plan, and Joni can correct me if I'm wrong, it seems to me we just need to modify the budget. I mean, I assume we funded this competitive program. We don't need to strike the legislation from the books. Because we may want to do the program in the future, it would just be a question of whether we fund it this year and the of funding the program that Dr. Norman suggests. I just, if we're, if we're going to do this, um, we certainly can discuss it, but that's probably the direction we would head. Yeah, it's more or less changing the policy around that funding and, and the marriage of the crown budget of it and everything. So. And we wouldn't be changing fiscal year at all. Right. We be right. Right. Year. It's we're not done. really a, a dollar-wise budget issue. It's just a policy change. On it, so. and we are talking about motor fuels. Yeah, and, and yeah. motor fuels was subject to some legislation. Right. Mm -hmm. is an issue here, which right. said that a certain percentage of it would go to competitive. competitive. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So that legislation doesn't need to be struck. But, or maybe it does, but that's my question. Um, um, it may be, I mean, yeah, make a modification now, and if you, in the future, you may have to modify it to go back if that was the case. This, this may be a distinction without a difference, but I would rather see it's not strike that legislation. We may want to revisit it someday and fund it again for right. those dollars, but whatever we need to do, it sounds like there's a crisis in the schools, it's going to be a better use of the funds. Thank you. Comment by the Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On these, so far to date, I mean, I, I find it hard to change anything since we just started it if we don't have a back on the table, and I appreciate what you did provide.
But I was curious about a couple of things. Did we then follow up to see that the grants that were provided were spent according to what they said they would? Um, can you get samples of that, or a listing of that in more detail? And then the other thing is, I was curious, do we provide technical assistance to the schools applying or that have been turned down so that they know how maybe they can do a better job of applying in the future? On, the, on your last uh, point on uh, providing technical assistance to the public schools, see the big problem that I have there is do not have the personnel to do it. I just really do not uh, have less personnel in math and science course than I had uh, last year. Um, so in order to actually utilize what we do have uh, to organize more uh, schools into ACE schools, to um, utilize the planetarium, and to actually work with science teachers and math teachers, the person in science, the person in math, that's all it is, uh, in order to effectively Good job. Dr. Morton, this was on the technical grants. Do you provide technical on these separate grants, the competitive the grants? Program. You do or do not provide any technical assistance? Through, only through JLN program. Now we do go, we will go back and evaluate each program. But I know maybe I need to, so just to, to make sure my mind's clear on the competitive grants, the motor vehicle tag mm -hmm. money. Do we provide technical assistance to the schools if they call in asking for questions and guidance on the grant applications or if they ask for feedback on maybe why it was declined? Right. Through through the JOM program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so JOM is their contact on that's that's, that's the mean. umbrella for that for that. Okay. Program. Very good. Thank you so much. Any more comments for Dr. Morton, sounds like we have a, is that, did we say a policy change we're going to address? A modification of, I'd say a modification of the, of the act, maybe may more appropriate, that's more, uh, your opinion would be better than mine on that, but actually, Dr. Morton, this was clear real quick. Council, why was that your request on the actions, Chair? What was your request on the actual? So, yes. that to more details about, like in the follow up or the audits, you know, what was funded? I, we saw the amounts, but what were the types of activities funded? The successes, on the and the number of students involved, those kind of things. Very good. Thank you. Found out we're culturally rich, but we're forgetting how to count. Yeah. <laughs> but on, on the on the legislation. Uh, I did a little research on the legislation. This was the program that was um, uh, sponsored by uh, Harley, uh, Mr. Butler, uh, uh, with some schools he had in, uh, in Delaware County that he was particularly concerned about. Um, and it's a good program. But I can, I can meet the needs of this program a whole lot better with existing resources than I can the public school core curriculum program. Would you need some staff to address these goals that we're talking about? To, to address the, uh, the modification? <laughs> yes. Maybe so. We need to discuss that in executive finance. Uh, in that budget model you talked about. Okay. Sure, speaker. Go ahead.
questions for Dr. Moore? Thank you very much. Verna Thompson. First, I'd like to thank Verna and her staff for the
junior college up in Kansas, but I was also uh, hoping that you could include uh, the few children that go to West Point Air Force Academy, the National Guard, I think there's five schools that they could possibly go to. And right now we have them, maybe one a year is is eligible out of Sequoia School. Very, very few of our children get to go. And there are extra costs associated with that uh, that endeavor. And I would hope that there might be the possibility that we could include those areas too. Do we have a financial impact report? Uh, $45,000 based on the current. Uh, enrollment that we have at uh, at high school, and so we we have that within the existing budget without modifying our budget. Would, we will, uh, as I mentioned to you before, we will probably, based on the seniors that we have within the 14th county area, uh, we probably will be asking for a slight budget modification in the spring to cover the fall. And will this take effect? Will this take effect immediately for the semester or will it be in the spring effective? That would be up to the language of your of your legislation of whether it, this would be for the future if it's uh, Retroactive, then that would, retroactive. that would be a, be a problem. If it's for spring, the authors of the resolution want to make it effective immediately. Uh, effective uh, for the current for the current semester, or effective for the semester that's coming up. So we've already received five five hundred. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, uh, let's see, we have 15 students okay. at, at Haskell, and it, we paid them out to 15,000, it takes 60,000 for, for a full uh, scholarship, same as the other, so it'd be 45,000 for this current school year, right? For the current school year. <laughs> For most of the if we went, we went back to October first. Okay. Did you run the numbers on those buildings? Yeah, that's. I mean, uh, but you're building that into what what you already have, and yeah. you come back with carryover. Is that what you're looking at doing? Not that I know of this year. Normally we have two or three. I don't think we do this year. But I can, I'll, I'll run the numbers and make sure. about what is provided by Haskell and, and what's promised and what's actually provided, I understand. But uh, I wonder if the same kind of discrepancies exist at the, at the military academies that would necess necessitate their inclusion in the same way uh, as Haskell, because as I'm understanding it, don't the military academies, isn't that a full ride uh, type of scholarship generally for, uh, for the people who attend them? Yes. And do we know if the same kinds of discrepancies in the cafeteria situation, the housing situation, et cetera, exist at the military academies as appear to exist at Haskell, which is primarily the reason we're, we're doing this? Some of the uh, service academies provide, uh, require a payment the first year, a processing payment of a couple thousand dollars, something like that. Um, one of them, and it, case my mind at present uh, will not accept funds. Mm -hmm. Just like you know, Gates will not accept funds. 
So you, we might, you might think about the legislation to the amount allowed by the uh, sponsoring uh, University of Arts Service Academy. Do, do we understand, it, is, is, there a, is there a need in the military academies? Because I've never heard from anybody that there was ever an issue. They, um, let's put it this way. There is, there is actually not a need, but they will accept the money and they will allow the student to at least use student credit card that's available on base. I'm, I'm sure all of us would accept the money whether we had a need or not. <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's a need for the Cherokee Nation to give money in this situation. I think it I think it harks back to what most of you think about that is the citizenship factor. Okay. Comes to the coach, you still got the floor. No, that's, uh, okay. <laughs> the additional thing that I'm concerned about is they do not pay travel. So unless they are going to stay there year round and never come home and interact with the people back here, they're, I mean, they're not going to have the money. The other thing was, as I recall, West Point, was requiring a lot of them to do a summer yes. program and they weren't paying for it. You had to figure out how to pay for it yourself. And I would think that both of those things we would want to cover if it was one of our students from, say, Sequoia High School, one of our outstanding students that gets accepted to West Point or to the Air Force Academy or to one of the military academies. We would want them to be able to once in a while interact with their own family. That's very strong. And their ability to stay in school is that they do once in a while get to see their family. Uh, the other thing, if they have a special needs to go in between the regular semesters, this would allow them the luxury of doing that if it was needed to keep them in school. And most, if not all of our children that have come from Sequoia have had to take those summer sessions and have not had even the money sometimes to buy the clothing just to get them there and or to bring them back every once in a while. Uh, I feel very strongly that if they are that caliber of a young person and we, we have very few of these children that are getting these types of uh, uh, educational benefits that we need to help them as well as we can, and, and I, uh, I feel very strongly that this, the, the, these children need to be included. Right now, apparently, we don't even have a child that may be in one of these academies. But if we do have one, I want them to have the money to go or the money to get there. Uh, it was just two summers ago that we had parents calling us saying, my kid gets to go to West Point, but he don't have the money to get there. And that was just two two years ago that we took that up before this body. And I think at that time, um, the powers to be elected not to help that child. And I always thought that was wrong. If, the, if they're given that scholarship chance, my gosh, can't the tribe help them get to the front door? Council on Walking Six. I'd just like to make a, uh, uh, either a friendly to have the students who attend high school uh, receive a, a, a thousand per semester, set two thousand per semester. Let me tell you, I, I thought about the amount quite a bit, and I came to the conclusion that if, if we're going to help these kids get to college, and my guess is they want it to be at this university. It's not a junior college, it's a full four-year school. And it is an Indian college. We're sending Indian yeah. kids to an Indian college. And if we can't stand behind them and back them up as good as we do somebody going to NSU, then somebody needs to explain that one to me. I know the money, but I understand. 
but they're going up to Big Kansas and it's a long way up there and it gets cold. And so they've got to, if they're playing basketball, they miss the evening meal, they got to go by. If they're working part time, and that's tough in that town, because it's got a couple other colleges right close to it. But if they are, and they miss the evening meal, they got to pay for it. It's not a free ride. I've been checking this out, and, and it's a good value, an excellent value. But it's not a free ride. It's not like being a football player at OU, where they give you a new Camaro when you show up. Uh, we got a whole new ball game here, and if we can't stand behind these kids, I want each and every one of you counselors to go talk to them and look at them and tell them why, because I'm not doing that. I'm going to stick with 2,000, but I do appreciate it. I would, like, I would make a motion that we do a thousand dollars per semester. Motion on the floor to amend uh, <coughs> the original. Any second? No second. <laughs> so we're back to the original for discussion. We have uh, council fishing on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, the way I'm seeing this um, is that it's a resolution for equity. So, and we also have a scholarship in there. To me, it's really not a scholarship. Um, and I, I don't want to argue the semantics of the word, but it's, it's more of a grant. It's not based on need. It's not based on academic performance. And it's based on if you're a Cherokee citizen. So I agree with the ones who have said that we need to uh, treat everyone equal. And so 2000, I've often wondered why there's a, you, go, you get less if you go to an Indian school. So 2000 per semester is uh, what everyone gets if you're a Cherokee citizen and I'll be voting to support this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Watts. Thank you. On the folks going to the academic or the academies, the military academies, are we saying on that amendment that that will be for any church citizen, regardless of whether where they originate, or it has to be within 14 counties? And will it be a one-time deal to cover those initial costs, or will it be the ongoing amount from the same as just one clarify as the other amounts? I actually envision this to be the same. to administer it if it were the same. I didn't even address that. That was my intention, to be the same as what we're doing. You'll see you in this year. I'm not sure if I did not look at it down here. I just want to clarify that the amount of the changes were safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Two things. Correct me. Somebody, if I'm wrong about this, but, but to Councillor Keener, so it's my understanding that students going to Haskell from here that, that we didn't, we weren't giving them 2,000 was because their tuition was paid already by Haskell. Is that, am I correct in that or not? Uh, that that was the reason? It's about 1,700 per year. Is what the university gives them for it. Yeah. So they're basically almost covered, and that this was already. And this, that there were simply some shortfalls in some of the extra expenses about housing and, and dorms and or, uh, food and things like that uh, was the first of all. Um, the second, the, the thing I wanted, um, I, I don't disagree at all with what Councillor Jordan uh, has stated, and I wondered if you would be um, agreeable that in, uh, in the 2000 for the people from the military academies that this be specified for things such as travel, on breaks, uh, summer, uh, classes, things like this, and the reason I'm saying this is because these people have, they do have a full ride from military academies, and if we are giving 
additional monies to that academy, but basically all we're doing is saving the academy money, uh, in my understanding, rather than, you know, uh, anything going directly to the Cherokee students specifically, whereas if it was sort of earmarked for their travel on grace, for uh, summer classes that that specific student would take and so forth, then it would be going very directly uh, to the Cherokee student as an additional thing rather than just subsidizing the military academy and letting them save a little bit of money. So that's my, that's my thought on good, that. Good, good comment there. Do the authors have any problem with specifying that for the military branches? Actually, Julia, you, you present a very good idea. Uh, we want to be sure the kids get mm -hmm. not to school right. so much. So I, I would be... Dr. Moore, could you, could you uh, <laughs> help us with the detail? Uh, because we're talking about specific We're going to be dealing with service candidates. We're going to be dealing with very small ones. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think it would even be incumbent upon us to almost adopt those and follow them through and deal with the bursar's office and say, hey, here's uh, Johnny Doe. He's sponsored by the Cherokee Nation. Uh, we want to take care of his uh, travel obligations uh, specifically in the area not uh, tied exclusively to his, the cost of uh, the academy, including okay. travel, extra expenses, and so on. Sure. I, I like that idea. That way we'll make sure that the child is getting money and that it's uh, not uh, as you say some reimbursement for the school. Does that satisfy the office? Is that good? Any more questions before we take this to a vote? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Does that, even if we give it to a Haskell student, then it still goes to half the two of the student, correct? We, we, it, we send it to Haskell, but we send it for each individual student. Yeah. And so since they don't have to... In other words, if they, don't, if they do not issue it to a student in their to the Cherokee Nation. Has that ever happened? For, for a university to... It, it happens pretty frequently. Uh, for instance... Uh, Academics, they would, they would send it back. If uh, a student uh, withdraws within uh, the appropriate time, you know, for a refund, then the school will send a refund to the Cherokee Nation. But normally they're going to use it all for whatever, we have no uh, policy on what they can spend it on. Correct. No. Uh, as far as uh, occasionally, well, let, let's switch to an, an, another program for the example. The uh, concurrently enrolled students that are in high school and college, uh, the university will issue them a a credit card that's good in the, the bookstore mm -hmm. and so forth because there's no way to determine. We're not going to cover all of it. There's no way to determine exactly what, what the need is. So we would not get any of that back, but the student would get it. In other words, the university wouldn't keep any of our money if not so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Carolyn went there to ask for and a lot of a lot of students go there and they always, no matter where you go around the world, you'll meet somebody who went to Haskell and they all seem like a big family. Yeah. So this is a good thing we're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Nina. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. If, if uh, the sponsor of Captain Lay doesn't care to object, I'd like to be a sponsor of this yeah. Do we need to move it forward tonight for the council? I'd like to make a motion to move it for the council. Second. Okay. Sponsors, anybody who do not want to be a sponsor. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll entertain the call for the question. Just one comment, if you will. I, mean, uh, I think the military academies, Air Force, Army, and so forth, they value those scholarships at 160000 So that includes clothes, uh, health care, everything. So, those scholarships are outstanding for our young people, and what we're doing is helping them get established transportation and everything. I think what we're doing is outstanding. Not